From coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world. From the heart of Europe. Arcana, Texas, Pastor Jeff Shreed, President and Founder of Brett Watson Ministries, Apostle Brett Watson, Ministry of Music, Singer and Songwriter, Mary Elizzi, ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. tonight I'm excited tonight to be a part of this wonderful opportunity those of you at home we want you to do something quickly go on the phone phone some people up Bishop Francis on TV there's gonna be an awesome time the prophetic's gonna be moving in here God's gonna have his own way we have some awesome men of God that's gonna be blessing us we got guests Pastor Jeff Shree is gonna be here ministering Pastor Terry Ellison Oh, I can see the crowd from Alabama is in here. <laughs> Apostle Brent Watson. And we're going to have powerful music from Mary Alassi. It's going to be awesome. And I'm excited. Listen, let me just say. I just got to say, I'm so excited to be a part of this great uh, Praise the Lord service tonight. Many people over the world is going to be touched because we have some great people who's going to change the course of your destiny because they have a word from the Lord. I was blessed to be um, at my friend's church, Bishop David Evans, and this great man of God, uh, I was ministering with him. He totally tore the place up. This young man is a voice that God is raising up for such a time like this. And I want you to remember him because God is going to start doing some extraordinary things in his life. And I believe that this is the time where God is raising people up that others don't know. But it is your time. <laughs> it is your season. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord for him. God bless you, Apostle. I am so excited that you were a part of this great service tonight. Um, people are going to be changed because of the word that's in your mouth. I know that the Lord has been using you and we've been talking about some things and transition and God's been doing in your life. Yes. But tell us how you got saved. Just give us an understanding about your life because there's some people out there, they just look at you and they're going to hear you in a minute, minister, but they won't understand your background. 16 years of full-time ministry, but all of my life I've been a PK. Okay. Pastor's kid. You've heard about us? <laughs> You've heard rumors about us? <laughs> But PK, I've been, in, I've been uh, blessed to be in a pastor's home all of my life. And, um, uh, you know, as Christians, men of God, we take for granted the goodness of God in our life, especially being raised in a foundation, a Christian home. Yeah. 
a pastor's home, you know, every Sunday seeing the power of God manifested, seeing lives changed, seeing my mom and dad operate in the ministry and the Spirit of God and the gifts and seeing things and individuals, their lives totally transformed. And we take for granted our foundation. Yes. And I begin to fall away right. um, because of, uh, you know, folk aren't always nice. Say it. I, I mean, I mean, I could go there, but we've got so much to talk about. But yeah. folk aren't always nice, and even Christian folks sometimes, you know. And so, and so, so in a pastor's home, I saw everything. Mm -hmm. I saw the way people worshipped on Sunday, and then in times talked about the pastor outside of church. You know. Can, can I can I ask you about that because? I'm a PK kid, so yes. I understand exactly what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> um, what people don't realize, there's a major pressure, and you know, something the Lord's laid on my heart in the future about ministering to PK kids, because some of them end up leaving the church. That's right. Um, some of them end up being the worst on the streets, simply because they're rebelling and they have been so hurt. Yes. Um, and they don't realize the kind of pressure That's right. that was on us. You know, we, they, the church expects us to be perfect, even yes, when we do. were children. Could you tell them about that? Well, that's the one thing through my life from childhood all the way up to about high school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw all different aspects of the ministry. And I, I saw my mom and dad. I saw them persevering, being determined. I saw lives being changed. But I also saw the other side of it where people were negative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Proverbs talks about that there's the power of life and death in our tongue. And individuals wonder why they're not getting blessed. Yes. Individuals wonder why that, why, well, I'm standing on the word of God and I'm fasting and I'm praying and I'm believing, but yet nothing's happening. It's because of what you're speaking out of your mouth. Right. You know, everything that you sow yes, out of your mouth is a seed. Yeah. And you're either going to reap a harvest of blessing or a harvest of curse yeah. because of what you're speaking. Yeah. And the Word of God also says to touch not my anointed. Mm -hmm. Do my prophets no harm. Say it. So what I saw was individuals who were acting churchy, mm -hmm. who would come in on Sunday morning. <laughs> come on now. But through the week they were acting like the devil. And I saw... <laughs> I saw and I experienced both sides. And I saw my precious mom and dad ministering their heart out. And then it was time that they would come home crying upon each other's shoulder, praying for the very individuals that had stabbed them in the back. You know, you know, that's the part that gets to me. People talk about you and you still have to end up praying for the same people. My God. And, and I found out when I was growing up, most of the people, when they really took sick, Sometimes it wasn't natural sickness, it was the hand of God. That's right. Because of things that they said with their own mouth. You know, um, there was a lady in the church, and I remember this, at the youngest of age, um, she had talked about my mom and dad. And I remember my parents telling me about it, and they had, she had talked about them within the church and um, lied upon. Yeah. I mean, I know that no one out there would lie upon a man or woman of God, but yeah. this woman I, did. Yeah. And, and my mom and dad prayed for this lady. And one night in intercession and travail, the Spirit of God spoke to my parents and said, I'm going to deal with this woman. And my dad, he was a humble man. He passed away in 1990. He's in, he's in glory, but, but had a heavenly experience. But um, he began to cry out, Lord, please. She's just human. And he said again, I said, take your hands off. I'm going to deal with her. And that very night while they were praying, her mother lost her mind. Jesus. They put her in an insane asylum. And guess who was beside the lady that was talking about my parents, praying for her and her mother, my mother. Mm. And the next Sunday, the woman came to church in front of everyone, interrupted the service and said, I want to apologize. Wow. God has got my attention and I want to ask forgiveness in front of you pastors as well as before the congregation and God. And the very minute she did, her mother regained her sanity. Hallelujah. So you're right, man of God. I think, I think one of the things people need to understand that when we're dealing with church, we're not just dealing with a company or a, no, an organization. It's a spiritual thing. Yes. And um, sometimes people don't realize that when God puts it, remember in the scripture about Miriam, when yes. she opposed Moses My and God. God struck her. Uh, people don't realize, and, and, and maybe there's someone out there don't realize that you're in trouble because you may have said some things uh, about a man or a woman of God. 
And I don't believe it's by chance that this man of God come out with this. But I pray that as we speak, you know, you would repent and ask God to come in and change your mind so that your deliverance. Because, see, the devil knows your destiny. Yes, he does. He knows that the hand of God is on your life. So, uh, man of God, I want, you to under I want you to tell them because um, one of the things that they need to understand is that we didn't choose no, ourselves. That's God right. has chosen us. Let them understand about choice. Well, from an early age, I had known I'd been called, and that's the one thing that scared me. Mm -hmm. Because, again, going back, I had seen the way ministers, men and women of God, were talked about, the things that they dealt with. I, I remember my mom and dad preaching about men and women of God and the Word of God, that they dealt with things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, I don't know if, if I have what it takes to be able to be strong enough to deal with what you've placed on my life as well as people. Yeah. And so I began to run from the call. I began to run as hard as I could run. And can, 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 that, can, that is so important because you, you, nowadays, and I've got to say this and please forgive me, there's a culture that worries me. People are getting saved one moment, and the same time they're getting saved, they're saying the Lord called them for ministry, which I'm not saying is wrong, right. but straight away they're opening in a church. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I thought there's this process that God... There is a process. Even Jesus took three years to disciple. Yes, yes. that's right. That's right. And, and, and one of the things I like what you're saying is, because uh, what they don't realize is when God calls us, we always end up running. Yes. It's not something that we want to really go to because we realize God, me, and especially we know the kind of person we are because there's some people we'd like to deal with them. <laughs> Kill them and raise them up later. <laughs> Sometimes we don't we want to raise them up, but thank God for Jesus. But the truth of the matter is, um, when, especially we're human beings, yes. as people forget that, we're human beings, and when we have to deal with people, um, let people understand this because I, I think they need to understand that when God calls you, there's a point where you do want to run. There is. And, you know, again, looking at all of that, um, I got scared. And I ran as hard as I could run. And it took my father's getting sick and it getting my attention to jerk me back into who I was in God. When I began to, um, we began to go to the hospital. My father passed away in 1990. And, and there were many days that he was sick, and we would go to the hospital, and um, in that room would be such a presence of God, and I would go into that room, even though I was backslidden, I would cry, wow. and I would feel the presence of God, and there were nurses that were saved because of the presence of God in that room, and I began to see, and I, and I, I began to get bitter, though. I said, God, you know, this man of God, he's done so much for you, and, and when he passed away, then for eight blocks, there was people standing outside the funeral home to see him, and then we had, he was, he, had, he was an English teacher, and he had a master's in English, and there were so many people that we had to have the funeral at the gymnasium at the school he taught in, as well as pastoring and evangelizing, wow. and um, I said, God, this man has touched so many individuals that I never thought were touched. And if he's done that, then I owe it to you and I owe it to him to make sure that I continue the heritage, the foundation that was established for me to be raised upon. It's, it's time for me to continue. Yes. And I remember in 1991, I was sitting downstairs in my mother's home and I was watching TBN. I thank God for Paul and Jen Crouch and this wonderful network. Amen. Amen. When men and women of God who have mentored me and spoken to my life. And I was watching this wonderful network, and I had never seen Benny Hinn before. Wow. And I didn't know who this guy was with his swoop hair across his, <laughs> you know. And, but it got my attention. Yes. And I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, it was like I was captured in this crusade, and my body begins to shake. Wow. And all of a sudden, the glory of God comes on me, and I begin to weep like a baby. And I, I pointed at the television screen, and I said, God, this may sound selfish, but if that's the kind of anointing you've got for my life, then that's what I want. Wow. But if you've got a, a smiley face, no power ministry for me, then you can keep it. I want signs and wonders yes, and miracles. Yes, yes. I want lives to be changed. Oh. I want the demonstration of God to be performed. And if that's the kind of anointing you've got for me, then I want it. Yes, yes, yes. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me right then, and he said, Brett, lift your hands. And I lifted my hands right then, and, and he said, claim it, it's yours. And I lifted my hands, and I claimed it, shaking like a leaf on a tree. My God. And, and, and God spoke to me clearer than I'd ever heard him before. And he said, in this day, I will confirm I've given it to you. Yes. 
My mom came in that evening and she was upstairs fixing supper and she opened up the fridge and a huge chunk of meat fell and crushed her foot and I heard her scream and I ran up the stairs and I came up and there she was holding her foot and, and it was swollen and it was all the colors that are not on the rainbow. Right. Come on somebody. <laughs> all the ugly ones. And, and I, I said, Mom, what's wrong? And she began to tell me, and she said, Honey, you're going to take me to the emergency room. I can't handle the pain. And right then, the Spirit of God said, I told you I would confirm it this day. Wow. Yes, yes, And I, yes. I said, No, 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 no. I said, Before we go to any earthly doctor, we're going to Dr. Jesus. Yes. And before, before I could even lay hands on her foot, I saw it just as sure as I'm sitting here, God be my witness, and the cloud of witnesses that are watching this program right now. Yes. I saw a gold mist that I had never seen before, and I've never seen since. But when I laid my hand, started to lay my hands upon her foot, I saw it shot out of the ceiling. It went into her foot, and she jumped up off the floor and began to dance in the Holy Ghost, yes. immediately healed. Hallelujah. And from that time until now... I've been doing what I can do for the kingdom. I've been paying the price, doing my best to pay the price for that anointing that he's placed upon my life. But it took a situation in my life. It took my father passing from, for God to get my attention. I honestly, man of God, I don't know that I'd be sitting here today if my father was still here. Because it took that to change me. Well, we thank God for Christian television. Yes. God uses it, it as a way my life. of touching It changed you. my life. Bill Roberts says that we miss the miracles that are passing us by every day because we don't have the heart of an expectancy. Wow, that's good. We have now moments that God is shaking and changing us. Mm. Every moment, God is doing something. Now, right yes. now, you can get your healing. Now, yes. you can get I'm your miracle. Now, Fire. every second of every moment, Hallelujah. God is doing now things. And if we are a people of promise, yes. and we're walking on our authority, and we're taking a stand in God, then we're going to get what is ours, yes. and we're going to be able to live our destiny right now. Yes, yes. You know, an apostle, that the word apostle is apostolos, to be right. sent forth. That's right. And that's what we, we're not another pretty little church on the corner. We got enough pretty little churches on the corner. It's time for us to establish the kingdom of God. It's time for us to raise up sons and daughters. Yes. It's time for us to be about the Father's bidding yeah. and raise up the men and women of God that are world changers. Yes. And if we don't do it, men and women of God, who's going to? Because God said, I send you forth yes. as sheep among the wolves. But it's your responsibility to do what I've called you to do. I've anointed you. Yes. Now release that anointing, impart it, and Hallelujah. change the world. And that's who we are, and that's what we're doing. Listen, listen. I've got a couple of minutes. I want you to look in the camera. I don't know what God is telling you right now. There's an anointing on your life. Listen, just let me just say, as he ministers, there's a number on the screen. If you need to pick it up, pick up a phone and phone and speak to someone. They're willing to pray with you. Right now, God is touching. Speak to the people, man of God. Just look into the camera and speak into the lives of the people. You know, all my life, I have felt like the underdog. Yes. I've felt like the black sheep at times. I've been judged, I've been ridiculed, I've been talked about by family, by friends, by those who said they'd be with me until the end. But I tell you one thing, those of you who are struggling, those of you who are dealing with situations in your own life, Jesus said, I'll stick with you till the end. Hallelujah. I'll be closer than a brother, closer than a father, a mother. He'll be everything you need in your life. I want you to understand that this is an hour where God is changing you. He's, he's rearranging us. He's taking us into a new dimension in the spirit. And, you know, sometimes we look at individuals upon the stage and we say, you know, gosh, I want to be in that glory. But you don't know the bat behind the scenes pay the price that we've had to pay to do what God has called us to do. You know. God wants you to go into the world and, and to preach the gospel, to touch the lives. You know, several years ago, there was a little lady in a church that we went to, and, and she was fixing coffee. And she said, you know, with another minister that I was with, she said, you know, she said, I don't have the ministry you have because you're changing the world. But we stopped her right then and said, ma'am, no, 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 no. God don't compete us. God don't compare us. Your ministry right here in serving coffee is hands extended of Jesus Christ. So those of you who are watching right now by television, and you say, you know, I felt like the underdog. I felt like that, that those have, have, that, have, that have judged me and told me that I couldn't, you know what, scientists said that a bubble bee couldn't fly. 
They said that, that it's scientifically impossible for a bumblebee to fly because the body is bigger than the wings. But God looked at that and said, I'm going to take the foolish things that confound the wise. He said, he said, he said, all I've got to do is speak. speak. All I've got to do is speak. See, when God speaks, Come on. life is birthed. Yes. Creation is given. That's why Satan tried to, to destroy our relationship in, in the garden all the way back to, to Adam and Eve because Satan knew that it was communication with God and God speaking into our lives Attention. that provokes and brings us into a place of life that we've never had before. Yes. And so... God said, everybody else said it's not going to happen. There have been those of you who have who've, who've had individuals point their fingers at you and laughed at you, scorned you and said it'll never happen. It was too much pizza last night. You had too much pizza. That's not a vision from God. That's a... But I'm telling you as surely as I'm sitting here in this set in Atlanta, Georgia, yes. God said to the bumblebee, fly. <laughs> and the bumblebee... <laughs> Took off flying. Baby, he said to you, fly. He's placed things down deep within your belly. The last six months, three months, you have felt a stirring. I'm telling you, men of God, the last seven months of my life has been the hardest that I have ever dealt with in the history of my ministry. But God has been shaking me. He's been shaking the very core. He's been shaking my foundation. Because you can't build on a faulty foundation. You've got to be able to build on a sure foundation. The man who built his, his house on the sand, when the waves came, when the storms came, yes. it was washed away. Yes. I'm telling you in this hour, man of God, yes. God has been stretching all of us. He's been creating a foundation for us so that he can build upon us. And it's in this hour that we should praise him. It's a year of promises. Yes. It's yes. a year of completion. It's a year of done. And God is doing something this year that we have never seen before. So you've got to begin to give God praise that you've never given before. And God is going to yank you out of that place and he's going to bring you to a place, a new dimension, a new stratosphere, yes. if you will where the snakes can't go, where the rodents can't go. He's going to take you into a place. When you release that yes. rubber band, what happens to that rubber band? It flies. And this is the hour that God is setting all of us into motion. He's been stretching us and he's been getting us ready for this hour yes. so that we can fly in the realm of the Spirit that we've never gone before. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you have heard the word of the Lord tonight. It doesn't matter what your situation is. God is about to stretch you. But out of the stretching, he's going to do something awesome. You have heard the word. My God, may the Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.